Should you raise money from your customer or a big strategic investor that could buy your business into the future? I'm gonna share with you the three things to consider and to look out for because you think it's all upside, it's money in the bank, but the truth is, is there's a lot of downside that you need to be aware so you can go into this eyes wide open. Should you take the money or should you run the do's and don'ts, the pros and cons? Let's get into it. Number one is information rights. So when you take money from an investor, you can decide if there is information rights part of that deal. Now, a really big investor is gonna want that. They're gonna want access to your numbers and your financials and your strategy and your board deck and all these different things. But you can decide because here's the challenge is that just because somebody writes you a check, if they're a customer, do you want that customer to know that you've got three months worth of runway left in the bank? Nope. Do you think there's a possibility if they even saw that trend line, six months, five months, four months, three months, that they might be talking to other vendors and trying to move as fast as possible to jump off your platform? Yep. So when you're thinking of raising money from an existing customer, you gotta understand is that you need to create some space. You have to create arm's length away that they don't have access to the information. If they don't ask for it, I would highly recommend you don't provide it. You know, I had a client once, he had a software in the analytics space and one of his investors Somehow, now they never could prove it, but they were sharing with me that it is weird. Every time they have a board meeting, it seems like their competitor's marketing team would start executing the exact same growth playbooks that they were using to grow the business. They were pretty sure that that customer that they took the money from was also feeding some of this to their competitor because they were trying to play both. They were not 100% competitive, but they were in the same market and they knew that they were trying to get on their good graces to potentially invest in them as well. Now they may not have said like, oh, this is what we're seeing this company do, but they might be like, hey, have you considered this? We've heard that that works really well. So information rights is something you want to keep close to the chest. You do not wanna make available for everybody if they don't ask for it. So if you do take their money, make sure that you protect the internals of your business. They only need to know what's coming out publicly. They do not need to know the internals. Number two is they'll dictate the roadmap. This is the pros and cons is that you might have a customer that's like, hey, we love what you're doing. We think it's awesome. We have these kind of like custom needs that your software could solve for us. And it'd be really great if we're gonna make a commitment in you know, multiple year contract that maybe we also invest. And part of that investment gets us some custom development. And one of my clients in the security space, they had this software and that was the exact conversation they had with the client before I showed up. Before we started working together, I remember them saying to me, we have an issue with one of our customers. And I'm like, what's going on? And they explained to me, well, we took a million dollar investment and 50% of that went in as equity. And the other 50% is kind of like, you know, in-kind services, right? So like custom configuration. But when they took the money, there was conversations around alignment with the roadmap, meaning that like the customer was supposed to pay to pull forward to advance features that they were gonna build anyways, they were just like pulling them forward maybe six months or 12 months or 16 months. But what happened was, is the statement of work started to tweak and change. And not only did they start requesting for features that they were never gonna build, they were gonna be one-offs, now they have to support it. All of a sudden now the amount of custom development, which was I think billed out at 150 an hour, like they kept changing the statement of work and changing the scope and nobody on the team was really like holding the customer to the constraint because you know, they're also a major investor in our business and they're also a major customer and they allow us to use them in our marketing and they speak at our event. And there was all these like concerns amongst the team of like pushing back and saying, no, we are not gonna build that. And it ended up getting to a place where the code base was a bit of a rat's nest because you have like this, part that everybody uses and then this other little small part that like nobody really maintains or focus on. And every time you launch new versions, it creates bugs and defects and issues with the code base. That is the risk is that you become a very cheap custom dev shop for that customer. You think it's a good idea. I'm going to take their money, but here's the reality. In my experience, if you have optionality, you're better off getting the customer to sign a multi-year contract that gets them committed 
Part of that is a co-marketing agreement, meaning they give you permission to use their name in your marketing, get that value set aside, and then go find the money. Go find somebody to invest in the business for just equity that's not gonna tell you how to build the product or change your roadmap. Number three is block an acquisition. Now, a lot of founders have never done this before, have never considered what does the future look like? If I go raise a bunch of money from Google or I raise a bunch of money from Salesforce or I raise a bunch of money from Facebook or whoever it is, when I go to potentially exit, you know, obviously these, these venture divisions of these companies are investing because they like what you're doing. They're like, hey, we see the world the same way and there's a good chance that where you're going and how you're building this is something that we'll probably want to do. And if at that point you guys decide that it's better for us to partner together, we want to entertain that optionality. What people don't realize is that when you go through that process, especially if they have information rights and they're aware of what's going on in your business, especially if they're aware that you only have two or three months of runway left, they may drop information in the market, kind of like poison pill-ish, where they'll like tell a competitor that you guys the technology isn't good, or they'll just make sure that that's heard because they would rather buy you. So you got to understand that if they've invested, they have information rights, or even if they've invested and they've heard you guys are looking to exit and they're competing against you, they may leak information to your competitors that they don't know where that information comes from, but they might just like decide, oh, okay, well, we're not going to invest. Or because you've taken money from Salesforce or Google or whoever, they don't want to make their competitor any money. So that might be a deal breaker. And that's the reality. I've seen this happen probably about 25 times where a company was getting acquired, but because that company raised money from the acquirer's competitor, they decide that is just a no-go. We don't do those kind of deals. We don't want to support our competitor for making any extra money. And they may, you know, push push things to be super unfavorable for everybody involved if you want to make the deal happen, et cetera. They just make it a lot harder. So you can do it. Just know that that'll be an area of challenge that you're going to have to overcome in the event of an exit. So should you raise money from a customer or a strategic investor? Maybe if one, you don't give them information, right? Two, you ensure they don't dictate your roadmap. And three, that they don't create a conflict in a potential acquire because they compete against somebody that is also on your target list of buyers. If those things are all mitigated and understood up front, then take the money, hashtag money in the bank, make it rain, get the capital, keep building the business and take your SaaS company to the next level. That is my suggestion to you. I just wanted to share those thoughts, those concepts so that you can be incredibly strategic as you go raise your money. Hope this finds you incredibly well. If you want more strategies, check out Fundraising Like a Pro. The link is below. It is literally my three-phase process that I've helped all of my clients raise over $500 million using this methodology. Check out the pre-marketing phase. Most people don't even know this is an area of focus and just how to connect with investors. Just click the link below, Fundraising Like a Pro. It is my gift to you. I hope this finds you awesome. Boom, and I'll see you next week.